Hi, welcome to PTV News. I'm Maritza Abreu. And I'm Tom Frusamer. Is the food stamp program spending too much money on unhealthy foods? Well, there's a new program that is going to be provided with $100 million for people in need. This program is called the Food Insecurity Nutrition Incentive, or FINI, which was approved in the 2014 Farm Bill. The new program is now taking applications to fund new community-based programs through December 15th. FINI will allow food stamp recipients to buy fresh fruit and vegetables due to a growing concern that food stamp users rely on eating solely unhealthy foods such as candy or soda. Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone vetoed the legislative budget amendment to begin funding off-duty guns for correction officers. Ballone feels that it violates the state Taylor law which bans lawmakers from negotiating with county unions. This was not the only reason Ballone did not want to supply off-duty officers with guns. He also feels that the true cost to provide guns for all correction officers would be over $517,000, which is a lot more than the $115,000 budget in the amendment. A second Long Island student says her school district has denied her request to form a Christian faith-based school club. Wanda School District denied that it has come to a decision, and Texas-based conservative religious groups said that it would force the issue in court. Wanta High School sophomore Liz Laverde, 15, said she presented her principal with a proposal to form the club in September, but was told she could not do so because it would be illegal. The club, dare to believe, would involve students studying the Bible, helping at soup kitchens, and raising money for charity. A deadly attack took place at a Jerusalem synagogue November 18, injuring six people and killing four. The synagogue's peaceful sanctuary turned into a house of horrors within moments after two Palestinian cousins used knives, axes, and a gun in a raid during morning prayers. Police responded within minutes, shooting and killing the attackers inside the synagogue in West Jerusalem's Harnoff area. The attack, which was the deadliest in Jerusalem since March 2008, came at a particularly tense time in the Israeli city and follows a series of recent deadly stabbings and vehicle incidents that have left the Jerusalem city on edge. A worker at the Diamond District jewelry store that was robbed last week was placed under arrest Monday night. Investigators suspect he set up last Tuesday's heights at Watch Standard Jewelry on West 47th Street. Rondu Frisbee was caught by the security cameras meeting with the two suspects earlier in the day on the street outside the shop. When cops came for him, they found a pound of cocaine during the search. They also found watches believed to have been stolen from Watch Standard Jewelry, sources said. And now we're going to send it over to Kevin's Corner. Hi, welcome to Kevin's Corner, where I'll be reviewing movies that are currently playing on PTV and at the Gold Coast Cinema. Today I'll be reviewing Godzilla, Mom's Night Out, and Edge of Tomorrow. First is Godzilla, the 2014 American reboot of the Japanese franchise of the same name. The story is that when two giant radiation-eating monsters are unearthed and, and threaten havoc to the world, they awaken the titular monster who could possibly be humanity's only hope. When I first heard there was going to be another Godzilla reboot, I was afraid it was going to be like the 1998 movie with Matthew Broderick. It was going to, like, just like that one, it was going to be a lot of fish. But fortunately, fear not, this reboot is actually a very nice reintroduction to the Godzilla mythos. Human characters can sometimes be a little boring, but once you get to see everyone's favorite kaiju in action, totally worth it. I give this franchise reset a 7 out of 10 yummy nuclear warheads. Next is Mom's Night Out, and no, it's not a porno. In fact, it's actually a Christian comedy. A comedy? A momedy? Tragedy? Any of those words would be appropriate to describe this movie, which is about a group of friends who just want to have a sober girls' night out and leave their obnoxious children with their dim-witted husbands. But as these comedies go, everything just goes wrong! Well, the good thing about this movie is that it's very short at only an hour and a half. The bad thing is it feels much, much longer. Remember when I said that Blended was boring? Yeah, I take that back. This movie was boring. It's also full of sexist stereotypes and has weird mixed messages. At least Blended managed to keep my interest, whereas this movie did not. I give this holy lack of ha-has a one and a half out of ten cliché derivatives. And finally, we have Oblivion, which is, which is about Tom Cruise fighting... Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong movie about Tom Cruise fighting aliens. I meant to say War of the Worlds. Oh, that's... Also the wrong movie about Tom Cruise fighting aliens. <sighs> Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow is what I meant is the movie where Tom Cruise fights aliens that I'm talking about. Specifically, aliens invade Earth and Tom Cruise is a public relations officer inexperienced in combat who is deployed into an invasion where he is killed in minutes but finds himself in a time loop and with the aid of a special forces soldier 
who used to have the same time looping ability, to use his said ability to try and defeat the aliens once and for all. So basically, Cruz's character dies and respawns like in a video game. Or you could put it like Independence Day meets Groundhog's Day. Now, as a movie on its own, it's actually surprisingly impressive with great pacing and writing. However, this movie does follow a particular trope in action movies, like The Matrix, Wanted, and even the Lego movie, arguably, where an average man who is actually the chosen one or something is trained by a strong woman to be the hero. This might seem feminist at first, but if your female lead is so strong and powerful, why not just make her the hero? I mean, in this movie, it actually makes a lot more sense, considering she had those time-looping powers to begin with. I mean, think about it. How many movies do we have where a woman saves the day? Okay, a few. But how many are there where, there's, where a man saves the day, but there's a female lead who's perfectly capable, but she has to fight some secondary female henchman, or suddenly becomes a damsel in distress for the film's climax's convenience, or dies just to motivate the hero? Just plain dies. Is male fulfillment really that important when it's been done over and over and over again? Well, I'm not here to judge social commentaries as tropes, but I thought that since this movie was a prime example, it'd be appropriate to mention it. So, I give this Tom Cruise fighting aliens movie an 8 out of 10 alien Scientology jokes I could have made during this review. Wait, did that count? Uh, anyways, that's all we have for today, but I'll see you next time. Now here's Tom and Natalie with the Green and Gold exclusive when we get back. Hi, and welcome to the Green and Gold Exclusive. I'm Tom Frusamer. And I'm Natalie Villanueva. On Sunday, the LIU Post Pioneers football team was released for the 2014 NCAA Division II Championship, and the LIU Post received number six seed. LIU Post defeated the AIC Yellow Jackets this past Saturday at the Northeast 10 Conference Championship at Springfield, Massachusetts, 58-25. This Saturday, November 22nd, marks the first ever meeting between the two programs. The LIU Pioneers will take on the third-seeded Trojans, Virginia State University, for the first round in the NCAA tournament. The champ of the game will travel to Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, for a second-round clash on November 29th. Our team's quarterback, Stephen Lorino, earns third straight Northeast 10 Player of the Week. It was more than a win, and congratulations to our LIU pioneers. ACP is hosting another trip to New York City for the Christmas Spectacular. Tickets are selling at the campus concierge desk for only $30. Start off the holiday season by attending this trip. It is worth buying and certainly worth going. Really for Life team at LIU Post is hosting Comedy Night on November 29th at 7.30 p.m. in the end zone. All proceeds that night will go to Relay for Life and the American Cancer Society. The entrance fee is only $2 for LIU Post students and $5 for guests. Do not miss out on an amazing night. LIU Post is hosting Holidays in Hillwood on December 1st from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. There will be tons of activities taking place, such as an ice skating rink, food, games, music, decorations, and more. Celebrate the holiday season with your friends right here at Post. For more information about the events that we just mentioned, please email us at greenandgoldexclusive at gmail.com. I'm Natalie Villanueva. And I'm Tom Frusamer. See you next week. See ya.